reached seven o'clock. I see it's been now. Thank you very much. It's being live on YouTube. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, as well as the administrators and the public listening on our uh, YouTube channel. It's seven o'clock. I see it's been now. Thank you very much. It's being live on YouTube. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So we will uh, now call to order the uh, February 16th Upper Adams School District board meeting. And if you will please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic, republic to the republic stands, which it stands. stands. One nation, nation, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Justice for all. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Hobbs, could I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Krause? Here. Mr. Ebert? Here. Mr. Fee? Here. Mr. Hollibaugh? Here. Mrs. Janzik? She's excused. Thank you. Mr. Lady? Here. Mr. Ponce? Here. Mr. Rotowski? Present. Mr. Wilson. Here. Thank you. All right, before we uh, move on, the Upper Adams School District Board of Directors would like to share a brief statement before we begin our formal agenda this evening. Our Board of Directors as elected officials representing our entire Upper Adams community is maddened by the acts of blatant racism and aggressions students and alumni experienced and recognized the courage required to share them in recent weeks. We thank our students and alumni for courageously bringing a voice to these shameful behaviors of racism. These acts do not reflect our school district's values of respect and inclusivity. Our entire board, along with the administration, are committed to ensuring racism stops here and now. Our purpose is to provide a school system capable of advancing thriving lives for all. The education we guide is broad and inclusive of life values that foster positive and productive future generations. In order to, inspi to inspire those who will lead us tomorrow, we must lead them today. Schools are part of the community and when our students face discrimination in any form, on or off campus, it truly becomes an issue for us all to address, not just any single person or entity alone. We must all do our part to eradicate racism, inclusive of all forms of discrimination. In the past two weeks, the school district has established collaborative partnerships with racism experts to guide listening and healing, while also building a comprehensive plan to advance sustainable changes to make us stronger together. The Upper Adams School District Board of Directors is included in this effort and will take part in Pennsylvania School Board Association training in the coming weeks. We are committed to doing our part to be more self-aware and intentional to support guiding efforts and decisions for creating an environment free of racism. We want our community to know we also recognize the need for improved representation and diversity on our elected board and hope that our community will step forward by considering greater engagement to help us achieve our goal of diversity on this board. As we continue in our commitment to eliminate racism, 
the school district will share ongoing updates and information on the comprehensive plan being developed with students, alumni, parents, faculty, staff, and the community. Those updates will be shared here at board meetings through direct school communication to students and parents on the school district website and through public sharing of information. We wanna thank the students, alumni, and our entire school administration, faculty and staff for working together to eradicate racism in every form for a better Adams County. Thank you. We will now proceed with the agenda that's in front of you all. Our first item on the agenda is the recognition of the certificate from the U.S. Census Bureau for 2020. Um, you all have that in your packages. Um, I'm, I'm at a loss as to what exactly we did for the census. Perhaps Dr. Dull, you could help us out. Maybe not. There we go. I was unmuting. This actually showed up uh, in the mail. So <laughs> it came to us. Um, I'm assuming that, um, you know, we had helped in some way, but again, I have no knowledge or background of why we received this in particular. It's the first time I've received one. Okay. Um, well, I guess we'll check back in 10 years and see if we get a second one. The next item on the agenda is public comment and there is nothing there. Uh, correspondence, I have nothing to share, so we'll go into reports. First report is the uh, legislative and PSBA report, Dr. Fee. Thank you, President Wilson, and thank you also for giving voice to the board's strong condemnation of, of racism and, um, and articulating some steps forward. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, I uh, had quite a long report this week. For those of you playing at home, I will point out it's part of the permanent record uh, and is available uh, through the website for those of you who may find these issues of is interest. Uh, I'm just gonna be very brief in the interest of time. I wanna point out uh, the first item had to do with the governor's uh, budget proposal. Uh, this is the beginning of uh, kind of a legislative battle royale, figuring out um, what's going to happen with the, uh, the, the upcoming state budget. Um, the, uh, the budget, as proposed by the governor, uh, has quite a lot in it for education. We'll see how that works out in the coming weeks. Um, for those who don't know very much about the budget uh, um, uh, system for schools in Pennsylvania, I, I should point out that uh, it's kind of uh, bass backwards in the sense that uh, we have to have our, our, our budget in place before we really know what the state government, uh, state budget is going to be. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to beat that dead horse that I've talked about many times, but that's, uh, uh, that's on the report as well as the response of the, the Pennsylvania School Board Association that I like to refer to as your good old Uncle Pisba. Um, and there's quite a lot of information uh, that they provide uh, that's helpful for giving context uh, to the governor's um, uh, proposed budget. Um, I also have an item on the fact that the Independent Fiscal Office released a report that forecast um, uh, a significant growth in school district property tax collections um, uh, in the coming years. Um, uh, that may be of interest uh, to folks. Um, and then finally, getting into the kind of meat of my report, um, uh, more than 350 school boards across the Commonwealth uh, are calling for charter funding reform. Uh, for those of you who are new to the board or who have not attended a board meeting before, you may not know this, but this is um, uh, something that we talk about a lot at school board meetings in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, and I have to say that's uh, for good reason, um, uh, because there are, uh, there are good uh, charter schools, there are less good charter schools, but the way that charter schools are funded in the Commonwealth uh, is not uh, very helpful, frankly, uh, and not very forward looking. Uh, so there is talk of uh, reform for that. I give a lot of information in this report. Uh, I want to point out that I provide in the footnotes direct links to primary documents. Uh, I would recommend that anyone who uh, doesn't really know what's going on 
uh, with the funding of charter schools in Pennsylvania, or indeed perhaps thinks that they do uh, on whatever side of that issue they may find themselves, um, it, it, it would behoove you to educate yourself. Uh, this is a really expensive proposition. Uh, it's not very well thought out and it's getting to be a bigger and a bigger problem. Uh, one of the reasons is because uh, school districts such as ours, uh, we have no control. If a student wishes to, to go to a, a charter school, certainly they may do that. Uh, but the funding implications are really dire um, because uh, the way that we pay for this is based on a formula that uh, might or might not have anything to do uh, with the actual costs incurred. Uh, and certainly that's, that's money that uh, is, is actually comes out of the budget of the district uh, without uh, being funded from anywhere else. It's on the back of the local uh, taxpayer. So those of you out there playing at home who are local taxpayers uh, who uh, like to think of yourself as fiscal watchdogs I think of my beloved Mr. Uh, Chuck Stump when I say this, really should have a look at how this works because it's not uh, uh, very financially uh, astute method. Um, in any case, that information is all there, including some really jaw-dropping numbers. Um, over the last five years, uh, the cost of, of uh, to this district, this small, uh, one of 500 districts in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has increased uh, by 50%. Uh, from over a million dollars to over a million and a half. Uh, and that's money that um, we can't really budget for because we don't really know when students are going to leave the district. Um, the accountability of charter schools also can be problematic. That's not to say there are not good charter schools. That's not my point. The way that they're funded uh, and the way that the outcomes are assessed uh, is problematic. And if you don't believe me, and I'm not suggesting you should, I suggest you go to Stanford University's Center for Research on Education Outcomes. I've looked at probably four credo, that's called, four credo reports uh, every four years, I believe it is. Uh, over the last 12 years, I've been writing these reports. Every year, they say the same thing. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, every time it comes out, it says the, uh, the same thing. Uh, and it specifically talks state by state, and it talks about uh, Pennsylvania charter schools. Uh, the outcomes are... Um, are not uh, as good as one might hope. And for cyber charters, uh, they tend to be absolutely abysmal. Um, there is not, uh, this is not good expense of taxpayer, good use of taxpayer money. Um, that is not to say that it never can be, but it, uh, it is to say that it is about time that this is looked at uh, in educational terms rather than simply in political terms. Um, in any case, uh, I know that I've, uh, I said I wasn't gonna talk long and then I railed on for a little bit there. So I'm gonna cut myself off at this point, but the report is very detailed. Uh, the footnotes are very detailed. I put, the, it's like a little scavenger hunt. There are little treasures in there for you to find. So uh, if, you, uh, if you look closely and you dig deep, you'll find some of those little treasures, but you'll also learn something about the way uh, that this system works in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, so I think I'll cut myself off there, Mr. President. Uh, that is my report. Thank you, Dr. Fee. Questions or comments for Dr. Fee on his report? Uh, I would add some, uh, some factoids you may or may not be aware of. Number one is right now, PSBA is, has a task force on uh, charter schools writ large, and I sit on that task force. The second thing that you might find interesting is 90% of funding for charter schools comes from the local taxpayer. And the third thing that's interesting is the cost to school districts for charter schools is going up faster than the enrollment um, for lots of different reasons, but it's just a fact. Any other comments for Dr. Fee? Okay, well, thank you again for your very extensive reporting. Um, we move on to the FRN report, Mr. Rutowski. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Wilson. So uh, just a note, I, I did send Candy an update a report. There were um, some typos that were addressed. So she'll be putting that up on the um, agenda manager, um, ho hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, four items, uh, President Joe Biden unveiled the American Rescue Plan that was unveiled back in January. Um, so that that uh, 
rescue plan, which is really a pandemic relief package, proposes uh, about a, a 170 billion in emergency uh, relief um, funding for uh, education. Uh, and this is all ties in with um, Biden's plan to uh, reopen the majority of K through eight schools in the first 100 days of its office. Um, the plan has not gone through uh, Senate, but um, he is pushing that the deadline be March 14th. I will note uh, that there has been conversations um, the bill really has not been able to garner um, the Republican support, um, but it is expected to pass through a budget reconciliation process. Also um, related to uh, the American Rescue Plan, we have the CDC is recommending that schools reopen uh, within the first 100 days. Their recommendations are actually in line with where we're already at as a district. Uh, but I did just want to point that out, that this is a, a push across the uh, country as well. Uh, we also have the E-Rate Emergency Connectivity Fund, uh, which is being proposed in the, uh, by the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, and that's met to, they, this committee met to discuss a 7.6 billion emergency connectivity fund, really to close what uh, they're calling the homework gap. Um, but essentially what this uh, fund will provide is additional funds for uh, the E-rate program. So I would expect some of that to uh, possibly trickle down into our district uh, or at least the state level. And then uh, we have a new uh, nominee for the Secretary of Education. Um, this was announced back in, in December, I believe, uh, Miguel Cardona uh, from Connecticut. Uh, he was uh, before um, uh, coming on to the Biden administration, he served uh, in the state of Connecticut as their uh, secretary of education. So uh, Cardona brings uh, expertise uh, in teaching uh, at the, in the public school level and also within administration as well. So uh, we look forward to bringing him on board. The, um, Full vote has not um, arrived in the Senate as of yet and has not been scheduled, but we can expect uh, that vote to uh, go through and he would be um, become the official uh, nominee for or official uh, Secretary of Education. So that's uh, news from the FRN report. Mr. Wilson, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rutowski. Any questions or comments for uh, Mr. Rutowski and his report? Uh, I would simply like to note that when uh, he mentions in his report that uh, <clears throat> the CDC is recommending schools reopen, um, we owe our superintendent, the administrators, and the teachers a debt of gratitude for not only coming up with a plan to open our schools last September, but to do so in as safe a way as possible. And the results uh, have been, uh, I think, at least for me personally, above expectations. And uh, our, the children of our community are the uh, beneficiaries of their planning and effort. So we move on then to uh, the LIU report, Dr. Dull. Just a few highlights from the uh, last board meeting held on February the 2nd. Um, their general operating budget for the 2021-2022 school year uh, was adopted as it was proposed. And um, the LIU health and safety plan was recently revised and adopted as well. Also their 2021-2022 school calendar for the IU centers was also adopted and their next meeting will be held on March the 2nd, 2021 at 7 p.m. Those are some of the highlights. All right, well, thank you. Any questions for Dr. Uh, Dahl and his uh, LIU report? All right, hearing none, we go on to federal programs. And I think the first one listed 
report is from Dr. Corwell. Good evening. Um, I'd like to just share that uh, last month we discussed uh, the fact that we were in, we were about to have our federal programs audit. Um, this month, uh, we are now in the midst of our audit. Um, in years past, our audit was done in person. Uh, currently, we are uploading information into a database so that our person from the state can review it and uh, get back to us on anything that we uh, need to add or take away from. Uh, the other thing that I just would like to add is that we are in the midst of our WIDA access testing. Uh, the teachers will use that information um, to uh, focus on curriculum for students' language abilities. And uh, that's all I have at this time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Alden. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, the first item I have is on January 29th, um, Gettysburg Littlestown and myself were present at um, through Zoom for a St. Francis Xavier School audit for Title I. We have to do this each year by federal statute. We give approximately 3,100 hours to St. Francis to provide reading, remedial reading support uh, to this year, to students. And happy to report that the uh, monitoring came out uh, very well and there were no issues with anything that St. Francis is uh, currently implementing for their program. Uh, the second item is it's funding adjustment season, which basically means for new board members, we get a, a good faith estimate over the summer months of how much title money we're going to get in each one of our programs. In January, or excuse me, in February or March time period, those numbers get firmed up and they are sent back to us. And sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down, and most of the times they go down and we have to readjust our budgets in our grant uh, appropriately to reflect those new numbers because those are the hard numbers. So we'll be getting those numbers uh, very soon from the Department of Federal Programs. And last but not least, as Dr. Corwell uh, shared, we are in the beginning of our virtual, uh, first time for this, virtual monitoring from the Department of Federal Programs. This was going to take several weeks uh, before they would come out in one day and sit with us and we would go through, show them paperwork, they would look at things. Uh, but this process will take uh, quite a while. Uh, they go through a lot of the uploaded documents as Dr. Corwell mentioned, and then they send us questions, we send them back answers, they look at more documents, send us more questions, we give them more answers. So it's not uh, the most effective uh, way to monitor, but in the times that we're in right now, it's the way we have to do business. So I'm hopeful uh, within about four to five weeks, we should uh, have this wrapped up and uh, be able to uh, share with you some results from it. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Alden. Any questions or comments for Dr. Caldwell or Mr. Alden? Mr. Wilson, not a uh, question, but a comment of appreciation to Dr. Corwell for laying out uh, the WIDA acronym and what it stands for. It did not go unnoticed. <laughs> Very well. All right, we move on. I note that the <clears throat> Cumberland Perry has no report this month. So we'll go on to uh, fund advisory. Mrs. Krause. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, for the this current year, the Canner Funds Board had voted to suspend its classroom grants and we donated approximately $22,000 to the district to help with the remote learning expenses that we have incurred. Um, at our recent meeting, the board, the Canner Fund Board voted to renew classroom grants again for the 21-22 school year. So we have provided an information sheet and a copy of the application that will hopefully be sent out soon to faculty and staff. Uh, we will also ask that the applications are put on SurveyMonkey and we will pull them from there uh, in May when we need to make decisions. So thank you. Any questions or comments for Mrs. Krause? 
All right, we move on to administrative reports. Um, I open the floor up for comments or questions for any of the administrators on their reports. Okay. Yeah, uh, actually, sorry, I, I didn't mute, unmute quick enough. Uh, All right, go ahead. Thank you. So uh, just a question for Jim, um, if it would be helpful if, well, you, you had stated in the report that um, uh, Commissioner McQually had reached out to you in terms of um, improving access to um, students in, in terms of connectivity. And uh, it would be helpful if we could get some more detail in terms of what's already there and who is missing. Um, you know, families that may not have the funds to provide internet. I know we provide hotspots, but then also those more rural areas where there's uh, less connectivity. I don't know if we have any um, metrics on that, um, but I, I think that would be helpful if we could get some information there. Uh, I'm interested in that topic and, and certainly appreciate McCauley, McCauley reaching out to you as well. Okay, I will get that information. You may recall, uh, Mr. Rutowski, about 18 months ago, uh, the, the uh, district did a survey of the students to figure out uh, who had access at home and who didn't. And uh, I, uh, Dr. Dahl can probably resurrect that. I don't remember exactly when it was, but it was certainly last school year. Do you recall, Dr. Dahl? I, I don't have the specific date for that. Um, it may be skewed data, just due to oh. the fact that I think some of it that was done at least at the secondary level, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody on the administrative team, but I think it was done electronically. So if someone didn't have access at home, they wouldn't have been able to take the, the survey. Mm -hmm. I think we did get one-to-one -one or very close to it at the elementary and intermediate level, because I think that may have been done, if my memory serves me correctly, during um, parent conferences. Yeah. Well, uh, if we could just, <clears throat> that report, I think, is in agenda manager somewhere. If we could dig it up and provide it to Mr. Rutowski, that may be at least. Yeah, I, I remember that. Question. I remember that being, uh, there, were, there were some I was concerned about how that data was gathered. Um, it was gathered right. it, call from the yeah. um, school meetings, uh, which a lot sure. of people were not able to attend. Yeah. And if you send somebody an email to ask them if they have access and they don't have access, um, maybe maybe the process has an issue. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> other uh, other comments for uh, administrators. President Wilson, I just wanted to offer a clarification. Uh, under the recognition of delegations, there was um, discussion about the certificate from the U.S. Census. I can provide a little bit of information on that if you'd like. Um, okay. Back in January of last year, I met with uh, a lady and a gentleman from the census that were heading up the census in our area, and they solicited our help in just getting the word out and and providing assistance in any way that we could. And some of the ways that we did that, we put on our website links to the census website where they could get in more information, folks could get more information about the census and enter their information in the database. Uh, they also provided us curriculum on what the census is and how it works. And that was shared with the social studies department here in the Upper Adams School District. Um, they also extended an opportunity for our, our high school students, especially those perhaps that were 18 years or older, if they wanted to earn some money or help out in a way uh, with the census, or even extending out for internship opportunities um, related to the census. Um, and we continued to help promote various uh, benchmarks for them um, by letting the, the social studies teachers know when certain timelines were getting near and so forth, and they would communicate that to their students as well so they could follow the process. And lastly, we were looking to possibly have them um, be a site for them for 
uh, community members that may not have access to technology or have not were not able to um, complete their census documents uh, in a timely manner, we would provide uh, an opportunity for them to actually come into the school and, and work with that census worker. A lot of those plans fell flat, obviously, with the pandemic and the school shutting down, but we um, were working collaboratively with that group. We did make some inroads and we were able to promote it on our website at the very least and uh, share the curriculum with the staff. Terrific. Thank you very much. That Thanks, explains you know. an awful lot. Anyone else for the administrators? Um, Mr. Wilson, may I add something to my report as well? Well, since you're talking anyway, how about also bragging a little bit on your sun dog people? Oh, great. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to add to um, the Jump Rope for Heart, the um, American Heart Association. I really want to send out a, a um, recognition to the families of the Upper Adams Intermediate School um, because they raised $5,951.69 for the Mar American Heart Association. So I thought that was worthy to um, say um, publicly and I thank the families for their generosity. Um, and I also want to recognize Mrs. Yarga Reed, our physical education teacher for um, all her efforts in raising, helping to raise that money. So I appreciate that. Um, and yes, Annie Garskoff and Alan Roberts, we have a some dog math competition and that's through the LIU and 1,555 students we're in the contest and we have two students in our building who ranked in the top 50. So Annie Garskoff ranked 28th and Alan Roberts was 41st. Um, and out of the 99 classes that qualified for the competition, um, we had one class rank, uh, Mrs. Schaefer's class ranked 18th out of that. So we're really proud of those kids and just wanted to publicly say that. So I appreciate that. Terrific, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I want to publicly acknowledge the uh, honor roll awardees uh, on Mr. Brewer's report, as, as well as his, uh, his uh, he, it's, the acronym is BUG. I don't have it written down here what it stands for, but it's uh, uh, kids have, who have improved their grades. And so, you know, it's, it's great to see the, the kids trying and the teachers being involved. Uh, Mrs. Graham, could you uh, talk, tell us a little bit about the Lions Club Student Awards and your art winners, please? Yes, the Lions Club each quarter uh, recognizes awards for academics, music, BOAG, and athletics. And um, we have, for our academics, we have Aldo Garcia, Ag Owen Brook, Athletics Caitlin Wilson, and Music Caitlin Cook. Um, all very good students and we're proud of them. And our art students participated in the All County Art Show at the Adams County Art Center in Gettysburg. And we had several students that had um, pieces on display that included some drawings, um, some pottery that they threw on the pottery wheel at school. And our students always amaze me with their artistic talent. Yeah, terrific. That's what we have. Thank, well, you. thank you very much. And congratulations to all, all of those students. Um, and Mr. Graham, you want to uh, brag a little bit about your Lions Club Athlete of the Quarter? Maybe not. Is Mr. Graham even here? I don't see him. Uh, I think okay. I think there's a sporting event this evening at the high school. He's probably. That's, that's fine. I should have looked to see if he was here, but uh, Caitlin Wilson was named the uh, Lions Club Athlete of the Quarter. And the final comment I have on the administrator's report uh, is a, an attaboy to Mrs. Hobbs, who had a second annual uh, uh, inspection on a food service account and came up with zero violations. And uh, that, that probably sounds easy until you have to go through it. So anyway, congratulations to all involved there. Um, so
shall we move on then to the superintendent's report, Dr. Dahl? A number of things um, to report on. Um, Mr. Wilson explained earlier um, and, and shared some comments about COVID and the pandemic and how our plans are working at the high school, um, intermediate school, middle school, and elementary school. Um, we continue to meet bi-weekly with our nurses and we've been impressed with um, the numbers more recently and how we're seeing the numbers and I should knock on wood so nothing changes tomorrow. Um, but we are in a really good place at each of our buildings right now with the numbers coming down. Um, we have noticed that when students are sick and parents keep them home when they are sick, that has been something that has saved us. So I know we continue to talk about um, the community working with us. That is something that they have done um, for the most part and it has saved us in a number of cases um, where someone may have been home or may have been in quarantine and later we find out that they had tested positive, which could have shut down a classroom or multiple classrooms, et cetera. So we continue to praise our parents and community for their efforts. I know it's difficult being a parent when you have a sick child and you have to make arrangements for them um, to stay home, but that is definitely something that is working along with our mask wearing, social distancing, and all the other things that we have in place with sanitation and sanitization and all those other uh, components. So again, I wanna thank all of our nurses. I know they're on this every single day. Um, we continually keep in touch with each other via email and phone calls, just so we are keeping on top of all the numbers in that 14 day uh, rolling average. Um, for each of our buildings to stay open. We did test a uh, flexible instructional day uh, last Friday. Um, it may have looked similar to a regular day at the high school and middle school because of what typically takes place that day. Um, we did test it at the intermediate school and also the elementary. So it was district-wide, including all of our offices, if we had to shut down for an emergency, what are the things that work? What are the things that didn't? We did get some feedback from some parents and we haven't had a chance at this point as our administrative team to debrief on how this past Friday went, um, but we do plan to do that and then bring some of that information back to the board. I know that was a request that came um, more recently. So we will uh, take a look at that and bring it back to you. Um, also, I wanted to mention some of the um, anti-racism plan and give you an update as to where we're at currently and some of the major um, components of the plan that we're working on currently. This plan will begin to evolve as we hear more from our, um, our students and our alumni. We are doing some listening sessions. We did some of those sessions today with our students at the high school. Uh, we will continue into tomorrow. If any alumni are listening um, this evening and would like to um, join us for any of those sessions, please call the district and contact Candy Bretzman um, so that you're able to um, participate in any of those sessions, uh, whether we have those tomorrow or possibly in the future. We are planning to do a climate, a school climate survey uh, that will be uh, conducted through our intermediate unit. And the survey will focus on perceptions in three different areas. The areas will be social emotional learning, student-centered supports, and also school safety. And um, this survey is actually aligned with the National School Climate Center and the surveys that they use nationally. So we will take a look at that. That'll invert involve groups of students, families, and, and community members as well. We will also look at, if you look at the Pennsylvania Department of Ed uh, website on the, the PDE, there's an equity section. We are looking at doing the Mid-Atlantic Equity Consortium Equity Audit, and we're looking to do that sometime in the spring or summer. And what that is, it's a research-based review of a number of district components. And, um, we're looking to do that in collaboration with our IU and um, also um, Nicole Holland's 
Sims, who is um, someone that works through the uh, Patan office over in, in Harrisburg. We do have a number of uh, training sessions that will take place starting in March. Um, I know that there are some costs associated with this. Um, if the board's in agreement, I don't have a contract yet from the IU, but we are looking at starting our first um, session on March the 1st on what is equity. And these will be done with our high school um, staff and um, the administration, faculty and staff at the high school. Um, we also go through um, what is equity from equity reflections as a group and individual coaching. We're gonna also look at um, identity training in April. And then the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission is going to provide unconscious bias training. We have a tentative date for mid-April um, for that to take place. We're also taking a look at student demographics and um, also culturally responsive pedagogy. So those are happening towards the end of April. And at the uh, beginning of May, we're looking at a shared ownership and community engagement uh, training as well. So there is a number of trainings that will be taking place over the next uh, two months um, coming up. We're also looking to go a little bit of a step further. We're gonna be looking at basic restorative practices and this will be a train to trainers model um, where we will be reaching out to some of our staff to see if they would be interested in being part of that training and later training um, more of our staff to have that happen on a continual basis. And then we're also looking at facilitating restorative practices, most likely, most likely at the beginning of June. In addition to some of these trainings, um, Mr. Wilson explained that we will be um, also taking a look at some possible PSBA training for our board. We will try to connect that in some way, either prior to a school board meeting or at some time when it works with, with your schedules. And uh, finally, we're looking to implement a, a communication plan so that everyone is on the same page with a number of the communications that are going out and how we're sending them out and when um, so that we can um, include the school community along the way. So that's a quick report on um, where we're at right now with our anti-racism racism plan. And um, as we hear from more of our students and um, receive more information on these surveys and uh, the audits, we will begin to refine um, what this will look like in the years to come and also in the near future. So that's my report. Very good, thank you, Dr. Dahl. Any questions or comments for the superintendent? Um, I appreciate the report. Uh, Dr. Dahl, this is a question for the board, but might it be useful to pull out um, the um, portion of the report regarding anti-racism and equity and have it as a separate um, report just ongoing? Well, either a separate report or a required um, section of his normal um, uh, monthly report would be my recommendation. They can be added very easily. Uh, if uh, I, I don't have a preference, but um, wh whatever is, is administratively easier in terms of putting the report together as long as the uh, putting words in the Mr. Rutowski's mouth, which I shouldn't do, but I think what we're really after is making sure that we get monthly reports on what's going on. Yes. Is that what you're after, Jim? Yeah, I think so. And I do think it yeah. would be helpful just to have it as its uh, own separate report pulled out rather than embedded within the superintendent report. All right. Is that a problem for you, Mr. or Dr. Dahl? I'll just be putting on a separate piece of paper. Yeah, I can yeah. move it from one page to another. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else for the superintendent? Just a quick right, question. Um, yeah. I, I have, if I may, Dr. Dahl, has there been any discussion 
um, looking at uh, the president's 100 day goal and knowing that we already fall within the, the criteria. Have there been discussions yet with the administrative team about possibly getting back to daily instruction for K through 12? We, as um, Mr. Wilson mentioned, um, we've been, I think, ahead of the curve from the very beginning of the school year. All of our students in K through six have been in every single day. And our middle and high school, we would have liked to have done something similar, but with the use of the same facilities for a lot of our, um, you know, feeding of children, um, you know, and th them going to different classes, sharing um, different teachers, it just wasn't feasible. I did send an email because we recently had a conversation with Matt Stem and Sherry Smith from PDE. Um, Sherry Smith was a uh, former superintendent, I think over at Lower Dolphin, or no, um, yeah, Lower Dolphin. And um, through that conversation, she had contacted us when our district was, or I should say not our district, when our county was going to go into substantial. And then along with that, there were a number of additional measures that we had to um, to, to keep track of. So when I talk about the COVID and how many students in each building um, over a 14 day, 14 day rolling average, um, looking at that, looking at, I think it was a document that both our board president and I had to sign and it just basically put a commitment that we had to follow all the recommendations that were coming out with the mass order, things of that nature. We recently had a, um, a follow-up with them, I would say within the last two weeks. And um, after that, I did send a follow-up email to ask, there's been a lot of conversation about um, what to do now. I said, is there any conversation or what is the current recommendations? Are you talking with uh, the CDC about when it gets to the point when we get to moderate or lower, are they going to begin to um, provide us new guidance to open up even more, provide more flexibility. At this time, there is not. I, I wish there would be, but um, unfortunately, there is not. So um, I was very hopeful to hear that with the vaccinations coming out, with um, you know numbers coming down, that there would be a conversation that that would have been taking place to give us some hope, give us some guidance that we would. Uh, be able to open some things up, but there's still um, there's still that accountability piece that we must you know follow what we have. I think we've done as much as we can at this point. Um, you know, we can always take a look and see if there are any other things that we might be able to do. But it's I feel like at this point our hands are are tied with um, what is required. And, um, you know, if we aren't following certain things, then we get reported to the state and then there's a whole other component related to that, which makes it even more challenging. And Fair the enough. numbers are much. coming, um, Mr. Hallwell, the numbers are definitely coming down, uh, but we are still in substantial community transmission as we have been for the past 15 weeks. So we, I think the superintendent is doing about the best that can be done under the circumstances, but I share your concern about getting back into uh, five days a week for the uh, seven through 12 as well. We do know where we want to target when the time comes. We, you know, we would like to target seventh, eighth and ninth and correct me if I'm wrong, um, either Beth or Shane, but we've had those conversations. Um, we um, had started to plan uh, before the Christmas holiday. We were planning on what it would look like coming back and all that was put on pause when we started to reach the substantial levels. Um, so all that was put on pause at this point. And more recently I reached out to the state and I didn't really get a response back that there was anything changing in the very near future. Thanks very much. Sure. Anything else for the superintendent? 
All right, hearing none, we'll go on to the treasurer's report, Mrs. Krause. Okay, um, first item, I move to approve the financial report ending January 31, 2021, and the condensed board summary report for January 2021. Second. There's a motion before the board to approve the uh, <clears throat> treasurer's report for January of 2021 and the combined uh, reports for the same month, and it has been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, could I have a roll call, please? Mr. Ponce? Yes. Mr. <laughs> Ebert? Yes. Mr. Rotowski? Yes. Mrs. Krause? Yes. Mr. Hollibaugh? Yes. Mr. Fee? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. And Mr. Lady, I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay, moving on. Um, item B, move to approve the Food Service Fund Statement of Operations ending January 31, 2021. Second. There's a motion before the board to approve the Food Service Fund Statement of Operations ending uh, January 31st of 2021, and it has been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, could I have a roll call, please? Mr. Lady? Aye. Mr. Everett? Yes. Mr. Ponce? Yes. Mr. Fee? Aye. Mr. Hollibaugh? Aye. Mr. Rotowski? Aye. Mrs. Krause? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay, I'll put these three together. Um, item C, D, and E move to approve the Student Activity Fund ending January 31, 2021, Bigglerville High School Principal's Account ending January 31 and the Bigglerville High School Tech Agency account also ending January 31, 2021. Second. There's a motion before the board to approve the three financial reports listed in your agenda as items 9, C, D, and E, and they have been seconded. It has been seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Wilson, this is yes. Candy. Could I please have who second that motion, please? Uh, it was Candy, Jim Lady. Thank you. All right. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Hollibaugh? Aye. Mr. Lady? Aye. Mr. Fee? Aye. Mr. Ponce? Yes. Mr. Ebert? Yes. Mr. Rotowski? Yes. Mrs. Krause? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Thank you. All right, that completes the treasurer's report. Thank you, Mrs. Krause. We move on to the consent agenda. Before we, I ask for a motion, does anyone have any items in the consent agenda that they wish to pull out and vote on separately? Hearing nothing, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda as written? So moved. Second. So I hear, and there is a motion before the board to approve the consent agenda as written, and it has been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, this does contain some financial information, so we'll need another roll call, please. Mr. Ebert? Yes. M Mr. Ponce? Yes. Mr. Rotowski? Aye. Mrs. Krause? Yes. Mr. Lady? Aye. Mr. Fee? Aye. Mr. Hollibaugh? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Very well, uh, we'll move on to uh, committee reports. And the first of those is finance. 
So we're back to you, Mrs. Krause. Okay, thank you. Uh, item one, a move to approve the general service agreement between Gavin and Upper Adams School District retroactive to January 25, 2021, as per the attached agreement. Um, I'm not sure I see that in the agenda. Okay, I was, uh, I didn't click on it. That was back in the committee or the consent. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. okay. <laughs> I'll try again. Number, uh, number one, I move to approve the letter of agreement between Upper Adams School District and Fox Rothschild LLP attorneys at law as per the attached agreement. Second. There's a motion before the board to approve the letter of agreement listed in your uh, agendas as item 11A1, and it has been seconded. Uh, any discussion? Again, Mr. Wilson, I'll need to know who seconded it. You guys are real quick tonight to get those seconds in there, and I'm not catching them. All right. I think it was Chris. Who was it? it was Fee. Chris, Chris Fee. Thank you. My apologies. I'm just hurt, Candy, that you didn't recognize my voice. <laughs> Muffled by your beard. Uh, this discussion of this item. It just might be helpful to uh, provide an overview. I know this has been discussed and read, but. Yes, I think uh, solicitor representing our solicitor this evening can probably offer some uh, context here and Dr. Dole. Yes. Thank you to the board and good evening community administrators. Uh, my name is Brooke Say. I'm from the law firm of Stock and Leader. Um, and from time to time, we support the school district in various uh, legal and education matters. As part of that relationship, the district asked us to examine and recommend options for an independent investigator to support the concerns presented to the school board by the community in the most recent days. Uh, after vetting several options, we were pleased to recommend the appointment of Fox Rothschild, which is listed on tonight's agenda out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as the third party investigator uh, proposed to conduct an independent, unbiased assessment of the district's policies, procedures, um, and a response to the alleged acts of racism uh, and or ethnic discrimination that's been recently shared by students and alumni of Biglerville High School on social media. The appointment um, of this firm is on tonight's agenda and it comes at our firm's recommendation. Very good, thank you. Any other uh, questions for uh, our uh, solicitor this evening on, on, this, on this particular motion? All right, hearing nothing, uh, could we have a roll call, please? Mr. Rotowski? Aye. Mr. Effort? Yes. Mr. Lady? Aye. Mr. Fee? Aye. Mrs. Krause? Yes. Mr. Hollibo? Aye. Mr. Ponce? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay, moving on, uh, item two, move to approve the quote from Tanner Furniture for Upper Adams Intermediate School Marico whiteboards for whiteboards and installation for a total cost of $6,962 as per the attached document. This billing will be paid by capital reserves. And do I hear a second? Second. Could you tell me your name? Well, you can you can put it down to me if you want. Uh, Ken. All right. I, I was a little quicker on the draw than Jim that time. <laughs> All right. All right. We have a motion before the board uh, to approve uh, a quote from Tanner Furniture listed in your agenda as item 11A2, and it has been seconded. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, could we have a roll call, please? Mr. Ebert? Yes. Mrs. Krause? Yes. Mr. Rotowski? Yes. Mr. Lady? Aye. 
Mr. Ponce? Yes. Mr. Hollibaugh? Aye. Mr. Fee? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Okay, and finally, item three, move to approve a proposal for appraisal report between Upper Adams School District and Herzog Appraisal Services Incorporated for the appraisal of the property located at 136 Rampike Hill Road, Bendersville Borough, Adams County, Pennsylvania, tax parcel district three, map two, parcel two, in the amount of $1,500 as per the attached proposal. And do I hear a second? Second. That was me again, Candy. There's a motion before the board to uh, approve the proposal for an an, a second appraisal of the uh, former Bendersville Elementary School. This is item, tw I'm sorry, 11A3 in your agenda. And it has been seconded. Any discussion? Um, I will note that this is the second appraisal. Uh, the first one was contained in the consent agenda and we are required to have uh, two or three, Mrs. Hobbs? Two. Two, so this is the second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, could I have a roll call, please? Mr. Lady? Aye. Mrs. Krause? Yes. Mr. Rotowski? Yes. Mr. Ebert? Yes. Mr. Ponce? Yes. Mr. Fee? Aye. Mr. Hollibaugh? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, thank you. And thank you, Mrs. Krause. We move on to personnel, Mr. Rutowski. OK. So uh, we'll start off with a recommended for the approval to accept uh, with gratitude for uh, Ms. Shower's service, the retirement of uh, Ann Showers and to also post uh, and advertise for a replacement for that position. Second. There's a motion before the board to uh, recommend approval of the request to retire of Mrs. Ann Showers. And we do so with regret. And also to uh, post and advertise for a replacement of that position. And it has been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, and I'll take uh, items three and five together. Uh, so I'd like to recommend the approval of uh, the continued leave of without pay for uh, our instructional assistant in Bigville Elementary School effective 217 through uh, March 16, 21. And I would like to recommend the approval to add uh, the individuals listed in items 5B to the uh, ESS Northeast substitute listing and the um, for teaching and the uh, staff substitute listing under uh, three or five B one and five B two. Second. There's a motion before the board uh, to approve um, the uh, continued leave without pay item 11B3A, as well as the uh, substitute listings, which would be item 11B5B, uh, one and two in your agendas, and it has been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Rutowski. We move on to property, Mr. Hollibaugh. Mr. Hollibaugh, are you muted? You are muted. No, you're not. I was, I think I'm on now. Um, yeah. Yes, I uh, recommend approval of the Orangeville Borough Bill 10 for the Orangeville Expansion Project as per the attached documents. 
Second. There's a motion before the board uh, to approve the bill number 10 for the Arntsville expansion project listed in your agenda as item 11C1 and it has been seconded. Any discussion? And I will refrain from my um, monthly comment about are we ever going to see an end to this? <clears throat> any, any relevant comments? Hearing none, could we have a roll call please? Mrs. Hobbs. Sorry, Mr. Fee. Aye. Mr. Ponce. Yes. Mrs. Krause. Yes. Mr. Rotowski. Yes. Mr. Ebert. Yes. Mr. Hollowell. Aye. Mr. Lady. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Hollowall. Uh, we move on to transportation, Mr. Lady. Okay, uh, item one, move to approve and add the following individuals to the Jacoby drivers list. <clears throat> Second. There's a motion before the board to approve the additions to the Jacoby driving drivers list. And there are names listed in the agenda at item at agenda number 11 D one a through E and it has been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Lady. Uh, moving on to the committee for uh, curriculum and extracurricular, I note that, let me make sure I'm, I know what I'm talking about. I don't see anything under curriculum, athletics, or other student activities. So we will move to um, <clears throat> policy. Mr. Ebert. All right. Before you, you have the minutes from our February meeting. We have eight first read policies listed there, and we have second, six second read policies listed there. Uh, I would move that uh, we approve the minutes and move first read policies on to second and approve second read policies for our policy manual. And do we hear a second? Second. That was Mr. Lady. We, uh, there's a motion before the board to approve the minutes of the most recent policy review committee to take the listed first read policies and move them to second read and to approve the second read policies. All of this is contained in item 13 on your agenda and it has been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, could we have a roll call please? Mrs. Krause? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Hollaball? Aye. Mr. Ponce? Yes. Mr. Ebert? Yes. Mr. Fee? Aye. Mr. Lady? Aye. Mr. Rotowski? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Thank you. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Everett. And we move on to payment of the bills. Uh, do I hear a motion to pay the bills? So moved. Second. There's a motion before the board to pay the bills. Uh, they are listed in three separate documents. Item 15 on your agenda and it has been seconded. Any discussion? Uh, just a note, I am going to abstain. My wife is listed on the uh, bills to be approved. Understood. Thank you. Further discussion? Hearing none, could we have a roll call, please? Mr. Fee? Aye. Mr. Ponce? Yes. Mrs. Krause? Yes. 
Mr. Lady? Aye. Mr. Hollibaugh? Aye. Mr. Ebert? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is old business. Uh, nothing listed. Does anyone have any old business they wish to discuss? Hearing none, we go to new business. Um, nothing again is listed. Any, anyone have any new business they'd like to bring up? Uh, hearing none, we'll go on to items of general information. The curriculum and extracurricular committee meeting and the business and operations committee meetings will be held uh, next on the 2nd of March at 6.30 in the evening and in all likelihood, it'll be a Zoom meeting. And the next policy meeting is the 4th of March. Uh, again, probably a Zoom meeting, but if not, it'll be in the boardroom. Our next regular school board meeting is scheduled for the 16th of March at 7 p.m. And uh, it will be determined whether we'll do that in person or via Zoom. Um, that completes our agenda for this evening. Um, Failing anyone having any further business to discuss, do I hear a motion that we adjourn? So moved. That was second. Speaking. We have a motion to uh, adjourn. It's been seconded. We are in adjournment. Thank you very much for your attention this evening. Councilor, thank you for uh, sharing your perspectives and joining our meeting this evening. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Say. Good night, everyone. Good night, Thanks. all. Thanks, good night, everybody. Thank you. I'll stay.